What's up internet? Here's my 2004 330. I'm going to do a quick walk around, show you what a basic drift setup looks like. To start off, you need some coilovers. This car's sitting on Raceland Ultimos. They were like 429 bucks, pretty good deal. Uh, they're a little bit stiffer than the traditional Racelands. Nothing really too special. Uh, I went ahead and replaced the rear springs because the Raceland ones were a little iffy. Uh, I have tine or teen, whatever, however you say it. Progressive springs in the rear. Uh, front rates are 425, and that's a linear rate. Rears, being a progressive, start off at 350, and at full compression, they're 700 or 750. Moving to the back. Got a nice welded 338 back there. Uh, adjustable camber arms. Got those on eBay for 80 bucks. Welded diff was 50, including, well, I welded it myself, so free labor. I have adjustable rear toe brackets. These are key for these cars, especially when you lower them, and especially for a drift setup. Uh, if you don't have an adjustable rear toe bracket, you're gonna see that your camber in the rear is gonna be limited. I'd say probably depending on how low at this height with a stock bracket you're limited to about maybe one and a half degrees per side. With my brackets now I can go all the way to zero camber and have zero toe. Right now I'm at zero toe in the rear and about half a degree of camber. Uh, that's just because of the local track setup. Uh, there are a bunch of huge elevation changes on that track and if I run full zero camber I start shaving the sidewalls on my tires because the car rolls so much. From an overall perspective, the whole chassis, I would definitely recommend doing bushings. This car has full Delrin bushings throughout with the exception of the engine mounts and the subframe bushings. The engine mounts are stock, they're OEM, brand new definitely cut down on a ton of vibration, especially if you're a daily driver. I would never recommend solid bushings on the engine for anybody who's not going a full race car build. Uh, the rear subframe bushings I just haven't gotten to yet. I have a subframe sitting out here, I just need to order them and do them, but that's definitely something that really needs to be handled soon, especially with how many events I'm doing now. These cars are notorious for tearing subframes. Uh, this one being a sedan, this is the strongest chassis that you can get for an E46. This one has about 18,000 newton meters of torsion strength. The next closest 3 Series is going to be 12,000 and that's a coupe with no fold down rear seats or sunroof. Um, up front also I have adjustable camber plates, eBay, as well, just like the rear camber arms. I think these were about 90 bucks, maybe 110 shipped. Uh, their pillow ball mount, no name brand, but they have huge studs. Look at those things. I have no idea why you would need that. Um, other than that, let's move on to the engine. Engine is pretty much stock, no tune, nothing. Uh, I just have the Dynan intake. I got that through work for a good deal. And then probably the most important mod if you want to make more power on these engines, Catless Headers. I got these for $101 shipped to my door. They're actually DNA Motoring, which I know sponsored an FD team at some point. Uh, they fit great. I've never had an issue. They're not leaking. I've had them on there for well over 30, 40,000 miles now. The car dynoed at 208 wheel horsepower and 214 foot-pounds which is pretty solid, especially given no tune. Um, as far as things like weight reduction, really the only thing I've done is gut the trunk. I mean, and not even, I still have all the battery stuff, the amp and everything are still in there. I still have the sound system in the car. The car still has AC. I can sit it in line at the track with the windows up, AC on, and just chill. Don't have to die of heat stroke every time. Um, that's pretty much it for the suspension. As far as steering goes, no ang no real angle mods. I have steering rack spacers, about four millimeters per side. You can get them in one millimeter washer sizes from Car McMaster Car, or whatever it is. They come in a pack of 25. It's like eight bucks. Totally worth it. 
Uh, the car gets just enough angle to where I can maneuver around the course and throw a little bit extra angle if I need to correct or anything like that on the inside. Excuse my key. Uh, it's probably the three, my three favorite mods for the whole car or any drift car. Uh, nice steering wheel. It's a grip royal. Uh, I love the feel. It makes driving so much better. Stock steering wheel and these things are just big, bulky, and stupid. Uh, got my old faithful Corbo GT seat. This thing has been in three different cars now. I sold it, bought it back. I love this thing. It's an XL. I'm not very big, but it's really comfy. It's reclinable. Not that I recline it or anything, but if I want to lay back and take a nap at the track, it works. Uh, finally, this is probably my favorite mod. Um, not a necessity, but if you have an E46, I can probably 99.9% .9 guarantee that your e-brake is awful. So, this is an ISR Performance inline handbrake and a Driftworks line setup. If you have a later model E46 like I do, it's really, really easy to plumb. You just run lines from up there, get two adapters, and the actual ABS module is right up here under the brake master so you just run everything right here uh, you run one line from the brake master to the hydro and then run the hydro to the rear brake output and as this is a four wheel ABS car that rear output does just go to the rear wheels um, both of them there's no teeing necessary all you have to do is buy two uh, M10 to M12 adapters and it'll go straight in otherwise as you can see, the car's mostly stock. It's been great to me. The car's got probably about 160,000 miles on it now. Maintenance-wise, it's been pretty good. Uh, definitely go ahead and replace your cooling system if, you're, if the car's new to you. I've had zero issues out of mine. The car's never overheated once. Um, I beat on this car every day. I've never, it's not, no smoke, no burning oil, nothing like that. So if you're looking for a good beginner platform, definitely would recommend an E46. They're very simple, very reliable, easy to work on. Parts are relatively cheap. And now that drifting's becoming such a big scene, more and more angle products and bushing kits are becoming are starting to become available. So if you have any questions, leave them below. Be happy to answer anything you've got. Um, any recommendations or uh, any information you guys want in another video, just let me know and I'll make it. Thanks.